Welcome back to the tangent. Today, in the room, we have Tim, hello, Devin, yo, and myself, James. Um, today, we're going to tackle a subject that has become kind of popular due to a show being moved over to Netflix, um, Cobra Kai. So we're actually going to discuss the original uh, subject matter of the Karate Kid. Um, we're going to go through the three movies. Um, yes, I know there's multiple movies. There's five total, I think, with the Karate Kid name on it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do the main three and we're going to do brief discussions on, um, the next Karate Kid, which is the fourth movie. And then the Karate Kid done by Jackie Chan and, uh, Jaden Smith. But, uh, we're going to start out with, uh, the original Karate Kid, good old Mr. Miyagi and, uh, Danielson. I mean, so starting out. In the movie itself, you get a kid being relocated from the East Coast mm -hmm. to the West Coast. So any of us that know the difference between living on both coasts, it's a freaking sh culture shock. Coasts of America? Or yeah. Coast? Okay. See, yeah. So just to preface this, I don't know squat. About so the, the movie kid. starts with uh, Daniel LaRusso, who's uh, 17, I think, in, in the first movie. Yeah, I think that's um, right about that. He's, he's 17, uh, he's going into senior year. They move from New Jersey. Uh, they are very Italian. Um, yeah, LaRusso. Um, LaRusso. Like, they, yeah. they, are, they are like a, the, you know, com complete, you know, Jersey Shore sort of, sort of Italian. Uh, yeah, but this is also back in the 80s. So, I mean, Jersey Shore back in the 80s is a little different, but yes, it's basic. It's the basic. Yeah, gu Guidos in the 80s were a lot less Guido y than they are in the 2000s. Yeah, but I mean, it's still basic. Um, from where they came from was a very Italian neighborhood, very yeah. Italian people, very family oriented. Like, everybody knew their neighbors or were somehow related to somebody who lived near them. That's just the way the East Coast worked back then. Yeah, um, they they had these communities of just yeah, the, the, Italians. The East, the East just, Coast was was very well known for, uh, especially in in the New England area. It was like you you keep to your group, right? You, know, you keep right. You, you know if you're Irish, you keep to the Irish. If you're Italian, you keep to the Italians. If you're you know whatever, you, you, you keep you keep to your group. So, <laughs> us from the Midwest, when I moved and lived in California for a while, it was a culture shock. That's just coming from the Midwest, going to a coastal city. Mm -hmm. It was a big shock going into California, but I was up in Northern California, so it's even different from Northern California to Southern California where they end up. So he's going from the East Coast where things are very, I don't want to use the word gloomy, but it's kind of a darker, dingy area to this bright, sunny palm trees everywhere and sand beaches and... You, you actually spend time on the beach. Because on the East Coast, yeah, they had beaches, but it wasn't one of those, like, they surfed every day, they, you know, always had beach parties and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you don't, you don't get a lot of the, uh, like, you don't get what you would really refer to as a, as a beach, at least in, in your in your head, until you get out of New England on the East Coast. You gotta, yeah, you, you gotta, gotta go south. down south. Now, there there are there are some <coughs> beaches in, in New England. I've been to one or two. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm um, not saying there's not. And it's, they, just, it's just a matter of uh, it's how, a, much, how much of the year are they available. Right. It's a different style of beach. It's just it's no different, different than northern, even, so. northern yeah. California and southern California, because there are a bunch of beaches in northern California we go to, but I'll tell you what, it was never warm enough, even in the summer, to go swimming in the ocean. Like, in Southern California, it is warm where you can go jump in the ocean. It actually feels good. In no Northern California, the wind would come off that coast, and it would be cold, and the water is cold, and it, it was just, it's just it's a different altogether. So, you have a, guy, a kid at 17, um, senior, he's about to be a senior in high school, being uprooted from something he's known his whole life to something completely different. I mean, like, completely backwards from what he's used to. Okay, my first question. <coughs> Why? Um, his mother... So his father dies, and his mom is 
trying to make enough money to support the family. Well, she was offered a decent job in computers on the West Coast. Yes. So she had, she, the only way to do it was to move. Right. Um, and the thing is, is that killed me is that she doesn't even get into the computer side of anything right away. She actually has to wait. And she used waiting tables at a restaurant in the first movie just to pay some bills at first. Yeah. So they they go to a place, uh, a small city outside of, like, L.A. called Reseda. So you got Beverly Hills and the high-end stuff of L.A. And then so L- have- L.A. is actually really similar to St. Louis, as far as I've been told, where it's basically... One city that people call a bunch of different cities because yeah. it's a bunch of different cities, right? That people just sort of group together in like a metropolitan area. Exactly, exactly. So, so like when I when I say like you know St. Louis, what I mean is the St. Louis metropolitan area, which is basically like half freaking county. Yeah, nobody need nobody actually means half or like actual St. Louis. Yeah, right. And even for us out in a completely different county. Um, from St. Louis, if you go and actually, that yeah, we're part of St. Louis metropolitan county, uh, metropolitan area technically too. Yeah, because we're we're it's suburb. But if you go out of town and somebody asks you where you're from, what are you going to say? Saint you're going to say St. Louis yeah. because people know where St. Louis is. Oh, yeah. we're just outside of St. Louis in a different county, but basically yeah. we're close enough to St. Louis to get into St. Louis without an issue. Basically, Reseda is the same thing. You can get into L.A pretty quickly from there. So it's kind of the poor side of the L.A. area. Um, which is fine. It doesn't matter. It's But they end up in the I same mean, I school with rich kids. I don't know how, don't know how true it is, but I've, I've also heard that L.A. is basically nothing but a series of poor areas with, like, two rich areas. That's a possibility now. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've been to L.A. once, and that was four years ago. And that's a pretty accurate way of how I viewed it. Yeah, it was, it was I mean, that's a, the way it is it was, now. It was just a bunch of poor areas with, like, two rich areas. But yeah, it, it's before, basically like a, a city office building area where a bunch of people sit out on the street with signs. and Right. You know, so the so homeless population out there has grown quite a bit. Because yeah. you got to understand that people go to L.A. to try to break into the movie biz. And if they don't make it, they end up homeless and on the streets and trying to make a little bit of cash. Well, also, to get also home a lot of I've, I've I've heard a lot of uh, people who yeah I talked to people who literally just like travel across the country like that that's all they do and they do their best to make sure that by winter they're in places like California because it is a mild winter right and if you're not going to be living in a structure you want that. Yeah. So it, it's it, yeah, it, and they, Cal- Cal- California. Happens. California is just an easy place to live if you don't have a roof, right? Florida is uh, the same way. Uh, so so is Hawaii, which is why they apparently have a large homeless population. See, also. I didn't know that because I figured it'd be harder to get over to Hawaii. Right. Well, you you just what you do is you start in Hawaii. It gives you a great advantage. You, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and actually, back to the subject of uh, Karate Kid. Pat Morita, who played uh, Mr. Miyagi, uh, right before he got the part for Mr. Miyagi, was actually homeless in Hawaii. Yeah. Nice. That's that's the reason why he has the goatee and his hair is all grown out the way it, it is. Because like, he, he, he usually kept it all short and he would shave off his facial hair. and So he looked a lot younger because he was a decently young guy at the time, actually. Um, and, but... He had been homeless for like six months on the streets of Hawaii. Well, yeah, because the mean, mean if you look at of some of the yeah. if you look at uh, some of the older movies that like Pat Morita, perfect. <laughs> some of the older movies that Pat Morita has done, and he is clean shaven. Yeah. I mean, he's only he only did one or two before the Karate Kid made him famous, but a lot of his roles came out of the Karate Kid. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit it's a bit of a weird thing because he was a comedian, which is the reason why they originally didn't want him for the part. But because he had been homeless and looked older, um, <laughs> they they eventually said yes to him because. But uh, and truthfully, I don't. Honestly, think he I was he was a, he was a decent actor, and he he like when you when you think of Mr. Miyagi, there's no no one else you can really think of. Uh, uh-uh, I don't think I could have pictured anybody else doing that role. I mean, he was. 
good enough at what he did martial arts wise to to hold his own. He wasn't the there's, most flexible. He wasn't the most. There's, there's probably only two other guys I think could have done it at the time. Uh, one of them was uh, Mako, which is the guy who uh, was the mentor type Miyagi figure in the movie Sidekicks. Yes. Uh, he, I think he could have done it. And uh, the old crazy eyed googly man from uh, um, Big Trouble in Little China, who was also uh, the spiritual leader guy from uh, The Golden Child. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so, done a couple other movies yeah. too that I know. Ba- basically, he plays that kind of thing too, but he plays it like crazy googly eyed mad scientist type way. Yeah, and he wouldn't have fit. He could have, he could have done it, but I think the character would have been radically different. So, back to the actual movie synopsis. So, after living in New Jersey and moving over to California, Daniel runs into this culture difference. And he's always wanted to learn karate. So, you know, he's been trying to teach himself out of books, the basic movements, which can be done because... It, Any good martial arts studio will also hand out booklets to their students so they can read actual techniques because sometimes Mm -hmm. people absorb information through reading. Some absorb information through actual doing. It actually harkens back to uh, things that have been traditionally done even in uh, European martial arts. So... The only only ways that that we know how they used to like sword fight back in the day really is through treatises that were written. So they'll illustrate, like, different sword techniques and grappling moves. and Right. So his, historical, like, European fencing, uh, you really only learn out of books and by sparring against other people who do it. Right. Uh, that's, that's the only way you can learn it. But, so he's learning, trying to learn martial arts out of a book. Um, he ends up at a beach party because somebody in his apartment complex invites him to this beach party. And that's when he meets the the lady, Allie, yeah, Allie, and then with an eye, with an eye, and then Johnny, which is the we're gonna call him the protagonist, but we'll go back to this whole <laughs> thing here in a little bit. Yeah, Johnny, our flawed hero, <clears throat> our flawed hero. Yeah. So that's where we meet his the main plot points to where. The, the this whole rivalry comes from. We've met the chick. We've so, so honestly, I, Johnny and Ali used just, to be. I a just thing. rewatched um, the uh, the Karate Kid movies. Karate Kid One and Karate Kid Three are actually kind of structured in a really weird way, where they just sort of like flash through things like really fast. Yeah. Um, like so, his neighbor he meets like when he first gets into town, basically. Yeah. And the neighbor invite, him the invites him to and yeah, and invites him to uh, to the the beach party. And you like never see that neighbor again. It's like he's never brought up. No one knows. Yeah, he's just there. Like, he's he's there for plot convenience, and then just you just for, have to forget about him. He just yeah. he's just not important. He was just there to take him to that beach party, and he becomes nothing after. Yeah. That. But uh, so that's where you know Daniel f- becomes infatuated with Allie, and. Um, Johnny and Allie used to be a thing, and Johnny's trying to get back together with Allie, and Allie's not wanting to have anything to do with it, and stuff happens, and Daniel and Johnny end up getting into a fight. Well, Johnny trains with a with a dojo called Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai, you know, strike strike hard, fight Str- hard, strike first, strike, strike hard, hard, no, no mercy. mercy. Yeah. Anyway, so they're very. They're supposed to be the bad guys in this whole situation, but Daniel does some stuff in the actual first fight that kind of is a little shady to me. But at the same time, you know, I can kind of see where he's coming from because it's he's just trying one, to it's save. One, it's one of those situations. He's trying to impress a girl. Yeah. The girl is is trying to you know not talk to her ex boyfriend. Ex boyfriend's trying to to make up for things. And there's just this whole little, like, like just triangle of, you know, just things going bad. on. Bad, yeah. Things everyone everyone has bad. their everyone has their own motivations in this particular scenario, and they're just sort of clashing with each other. Right. Um, so, there's a lot of stuff that happens between Johnny and Daniel now. Well, after Daniel gets his butt handed to him by this black belt in karate, Johnny, yeah. 
Daniel decides that he wants to try to learn karate, so there's a studio, like, right next to his, this restaurant his mom's working at, so he goes over and walks in, and guess who's inside? Mr. Miyagi. No, Johnny. it's Johnny. Johnny. And all of his friends because are that, in that, this that, that, that karate, karate studio. Yeah, that, that karate dojo happened to be Cobra Kai. Uh, so he freaks out and leaves, and then there's a lot of stuff that happens between Johnny and, and um, Daniel. So we're going to fast forward a little bit, not too much, because he meets Mr. Miyagi pretty early. Well, he, meet, he meets him... Like, on the first day, because Mr. Miyagi is the maintenance man yes. at the apartment complex that he lives in, <coughs> and their sink is screwing up or something. Yes. Uh, okay. So he goes down to talk to Mr. Miyagi, who is being a crazy person in the basement because he's trying to catch flies with chopsticks, um, and just and ignoring his job. Fly, man <laughs> who catch fly with chopstick accomplish anything. Yes. Um, so he's trying to catch a fly with some chopsticks and not doing his job. Oh, man. <laughs> so, but, so, Mr. Miyagi doesn't actually go up to the apartment until the day after, and the day after is when, is right after Daniel get beat up at right. the beach party, and he's got a black eye, and he's in the living room, reading out of a book, practicing front kicks. Yeah. And he goes, ah, karate? And he's like, yeah, and, you know, they start talking a little bit, and then... Learn from a book. The, <laughs> Move the, the story along a little bit. Um, Halloween comes around. Him and Miss Miyagi had started getting a little close, like he would go down and talk to him, and something about a bike. Mr. Miyagi fixed his bike because Johnny and them. Right, so after, after the. After uh, Daniel goes to the dojo. Johnny uh, just sort of just sort of goes trying to get into my dojo and like pushes him down like a really steep hill while he's on his bike and destroys the bike. And so Johnny and all his friends have motorcycles, dirt bikes. Okay. And Daniel's riding a pedal bicycle. Right. And they so right, come up to him and just push him and push him and ease him off and he falls off this thing and breaks his bike and he, he gets mad and he gets starts throwing things and throws his bike and throws his bike in and the trash. What's 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 funny is. His mom sees that, and you can tell that he wants her to see it because he's trying to make the excuse that the crash was the bike's fault, so he doesn't have to tell her that he got into a fight. Right. Because uh, you can tell based on what he's saying, he's like, "Stupid bike, you know, you, you know, you, you should have done the thing." And it's, he's trying to blame the bike so that his mom won't know what the hell happened. Right. So, um, and this, which which she does not get fooled by at all. Mr. Miyagi sees it also, and then he fixes the bike, and then he, him and Daniel start to gain a little relationship because of him fixing the bike and this, that, and the other. So, Halloween comes around, and Daniel doesn't have a costume for the Halloween dance, so Mr. Miyagi throws one together from his workshop. And the thing is, is this is the coolest Halloween costume ever, because it is literally just a ring with a shower curtain on it. With a shower head with, like, streamers on it. Like, silver streamers, so it looks like he's actually taking a shower. He just hikes up his pants to about here. And then the shower curtain, or to about his knees. And then shower curtain stops, so it looks like he's wearing nothing underneath. Right, and, and he, he just, just, he just walks around with it. Like he, it's got, like, a harness that, like, he wears it on his shoulders. And it props the whole thing up, and he just, so he just walks it's around. It's really cool. It's like I mean, it's like portable shower nice. sort of thing. So he runs into Ali at the dance. They dance in the shower. Ooh, kind of cute, and blah blah blah. But here's where things go a little awry for me, because had he just left Johnny the f alone, I think this would have eventually just blown over. But no, he has a star shit. So he grabs a, he. Finds Johnny in the bathroom rolling a joint. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny and the Cobra Kai guys are all, oh, all getting yeah. ready to See, get high. Gotta push that narrative. Then yeah. Daniel's a good guy. <coughs> this guy's smoking Schweed in the bathroom. So, 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 him. so Daniel sees a hose in the in the laundry tub of the bathroom, and he runs his hose up over the top where the sprinkler system would be, like the fire suppression sprinkler. Runs it on the top to where the hose is just going to drop water all over Johnny. And he freaking cranks the freaking water on and bails. Yeah. 
Alright. Like, he, he doesn't just, like, run out of the bathroom. He, like, runs out of the dance. Like So he runs, gone, yeah, out the dance, almost gets hit by a car, causes, causes, causes like, a, a three-car three car accident. Pile yeah. Freaking... The Cobra and, and, Kai guys go, are chasing after him, and he runs running through this field, and he ends up by his apartment complex in yeah. Reseda, and he tries to get over a fence and just can't quite get over there because the Cobra Kai guys get up to him and pull him down, and they start beating the living crap out of him. And then, out of nowhere, the old man jumps a freaking fence, beats the crap out of, what, old four or five freaking... So it's just this fucking old random dude beats the crap out of a bunch of right, little so kids? Like, Mr. Miyagi... I mean, they're all like 17, but you know, the, 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 the child batterer Miyagi shows yeah, up for just exactly. the day. That's just like... So, again, we're going to get to this whole, what we're <clears throat> talking about, the whole protagonist and why things... Anyway, we're going to get to that here shortly, but... So shortly, like right after that, um, Miyagi is kind of taking care of Daniel's wounds and tells Daniel that we're going to take care of this, we're going to go down to the dojo and we're going to have them stop, you know, this, that, and the other. Well, anybody who's actually ever seen the movie, which you haven't, John Kreese is a dick. John Kreese is the, the um, sensei for Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai dojo, okay. He is one of those, like... I will, I want to kill everything, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to fight, I'm going to, no yeah. mercy, so, no matter what, you know, it, there, there's, finish there's what a, there's a lot of There's a lot of um, theories on this right now, because he was a Vietnam vet, that's that's obvious, in, uh, in the, uh, the movie, because they show, uh, you know, pictures of him as a soldier in, in, in the war, and so, he was a Vietnam veteran. Uh, and according to uh, the backstory that I don't think they get into in the first movie, but according to the backstory, he learned um, uh, karate in Vietnam uh, while he was in special forces from a special forces trainer that the U.S. military had brought in specially for him and his and his uh, team his team. Yeah, um, and so that's how he comes up with Cobra Kai. Is that's the style of karate he was taught. For the special forces, okay. um, so uh, his whole his whole thing, and the theory, the theory is that he's basically a guy with PTSD who has a complex about losing a, a winnable war um, that he wasn't allowed to win, and he had to like watch all of his friends and and stuff like die for no reason, uh, and then they couldn't even win the war afterwards. Gotcha. Um, so and so he's had he has this complex where he doesn't want to lose anything, and he doesn't want any of his students to lose anything, uh, and so he just he just goes on and on and on like this. Um, but he's he's kind of a jerk, and so like the the strike first, strike hard, no mercy thing. That's his his mantra, and his students uh, they're, they're being dicks throughout the whole movie, but they're just listening to his lessons. Right, like they're they're enacting them in real life. Strike hard, strike first. No yeah, mercy. right. Gotcha. Uh, and so when Miyagi and Daniel show up, this guy has like literally no reason to tell his students to stop, and he's just like, "What are you gonna do, old man?" And he's, so yeah, so <laughs> Miyagi convinces Daniel to go to the the studio and try to convince them to leave him alone, to stop. It's done. The fighting's over. Let's just stop this. Whatever. Blah blah blah. But when Miss Miyagi walks in and realizes that this teacher is not going to teach restraint or, or honor or anything like that, he's like, well, it looks like we're going to have to end this in a fight. But let's make this fight a fair fight where there's rules and points and an actual tournament style. So there is what they call the All-Valley Tournament. Right, okay. So he convinces them to let him train Daniel for the All-Valley, and if you guys really want revenge on Daniel, fight him at the All-Valley where there's refs and rules and stuff like that. But he also convinces them that no more fighting on the streets until the tournament. So allow Mr. Miyagi to train Daniel for said tournament. So now, where are we? We have... The Cobra Kai's who are all trained already. We have Daniel who was only trained out of books and knows basic strikes. 
And then Mr. Miyagi, who is a obviously karate master of some kind, going to teach Daniel how to do all this stuff. Okay. So, there's a lot more story involved, but the story itself that's involved is just the love story between Daniel and Allie and the good and the bad that come with most love in movies because, you know, there's always some... The guy always does something stupid to piss off the girl. I'm and then, guessing that Daniel was probably a, a douche at some point and probably broke the rule that Mr. Miyagi set of no fighting. No, actually what happens is he gets mad because he was asked by Allie to meet her at some restaurant or something that they were supposed to go out afterwards but she had to have dinner with her parents first <coughs> and uh, when he gets there to meet with Allie he's there early I don't know how he gets through the kitchen but he ends up through the kitchen area looks through the window and sees Allie and Johnny dancing together on the floor because Johnny's oh, right, parents right, are rich, yeah. and Allie's parents are rich, and they just happen to be at this place at the same time. Allie was dancing with her dad, and then yeah, it was, Johnny it was like, it was like a in. charity event or something at like a like a country club. Yeah, that's a country, yeah, country club. That's what I was looking for. Well, Daniel sees that and gets mad, and he turns around, and he nails a plate of spaghetti because you know he's Italian. It's got to be red on a white shirt and make it look all. Gets all mad and stuff like that. And Johnny starts laughing and Allie doesn't like it and freaking... What did he do? He like threw a plate of spaghetti? No, he it. turned and ran into a waiter holding a plate, holding oh. food to go out. And it all ended up all over him and this, that, and the other. And yeah, he, he caused he, a he ruckus, 80s, He ate his slapstick <coughs> his way through a kitchen. Gotcha. Uh, All right. That's a better explanation. Yeah, sorry. It was really bad. It was a really bad explanation on my point. But Johnny sees it, and everybody else sees it, and, oh, it's funny, and Johnny starts laughing, it's and funny. Allie There's slaps There's a small him. Italian child covered in spaghetti. And, ah. ha, 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 ha. <laughs> well, <laughs> Daniel's mad at Allie for dancing with Johnny, funny. but won't let Allie explain, explain. What, what actually happened and why they got to that point, and... Stuff like that. So, there's obviously the guy does something stupid and... Overreacts. Overreacts and, you know... Anyway, really that has very little to do with said story. Especially, the story especially is, when, you, when you take all of the movies as a whole. <laughs> because the, the love story there is just there to keep things in her, moving and entertaining in a certain way. Yeah, build the... the but the main and... story is the... the, the the rivalry between Johnny and right. Daniel and the Cobra Kai stuff. So, Daniel gets trained by Mr. Miyagi. You know, the whole wax on, wax off, stay on the floor, paint the house, paint the fence. And this whole time, Daniel's getting frustrated because all he's doing is hey, basic he's labor getting, work. He's getting, he's getting closer and closer to the tournament and he's learned no karate. <laughs> right. But... The thing is, is that this is where the cliche comes in of everything else, is that all the techniques he's been using to do all of this stuff for Mr. Miyagi are the techniques needed to basically defend. Because karate is all things. Yeah, karate, <laughs> and the thing is, is that Miyagi's karate is defense first. Gotcha. So he's yeah, training the, the, Daniel. The two, the two rules of Miyagi Do <coughs> Karate. Um, rule number one: uh, Karate is for defense only. Rule number two: First learn rule number one. <laughs> yeah. It's, so he's teaching Daniel the basic hand movements for defending. defensive moves. So when I say wax on, it's a circle with your hands that will help you. Yeah, block movements out of the way. Sand the floor will block movements out of the way. Paint the fences up and down, which again blocks movements out of the way. Paint the house and side to side movements again, moving stuff out of the way. So he's teaching him how to do the techniques through repetition. This repetition just happens to be manual labor. Mm -hmm. 
but it's still repetition because if you have to paint a whole freaking fence on this yard that is freaking enormous over doing the same freaking motion over and over and over again, you're going to get that motion down pat. So, and to go again with washing and waxing the cars, and then sanding the floor, and when I say sanding the floor, he builds this humongous deck, and he has to sand the whole deck down with these little drums. Nice. You know, wouldn't it be easier to go back and forth? He goes, yes, 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 but you go in circles. Sand the floor. Sand the floor. So... It comes to a point where Daniel gets frustrated and says, I'm not learning anything. I'm almost at a tournament. You haven't taught me anything. And he goes, out of nowhere, he just starts telling him, do these movements, do these movements. And he starts throwing kicks and punches at him. And he, Daniel's doing Daniel's these movements blocking and blocking. He's like, oh, shit, I learned karate. Yeah. <laughs> so the story moves on a little bit. They do some montaging stuff and... Blah, 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 blah. Him and Allie make up... uh, Like, right before the tournament. Right before the tournament. Shit happens. It's like the night before the tournament. They make up. Oh, kissy face, blah, blah, blah. Again, the love story has very little to do with the actual story of the movie. But, so, tournament comes. He ends up... Slowly making his way through the tournament. Gotcha. A couple of fights, he has to fight some of the Cobra Kai guys. You know, he ends up hurting his ribs at some point because what? Uh, what's his name? Uh, I was uh, Bobby, I think. No, it wasn't Bobby. It was uh, the uh, blonde haired uh, kid. Jimmy. Uh, was it? Uh, was it Tommy? Was it? Uh, was it Dutch? Dutch. <laughs> Dutch ends up punching him in the side real hard and breaking his ribs. So he tapes them up, but they keep going. He keeps fighting and fighting and fighting. So they're now into the finals. I'm pushing a lot of this really fast because it's, we've already spent 30 Cause, minutes. Because he's, he's the best around. The first movie. And no one's ever going to keep him down. And uh, Yeah. I think, Big I think, montage, basically, at the end of him going through the tournament. Yeah. So the final four is him and John, or him and Tommy. So Daniel has to fight Tommy, which is another Cobra Kai. It's probably like. Obviously, the second best after Johnny. After Johnny, and then Johnny has to fight another guy, and the other guy that Johnny fights is actually a really good martial artist. If you actually watch the movie, he's probably one of the only people in that whole thing that actually know martial arts. Yeah. <clears throat> so funny, little tidbit of facto, blah blah blah. The referee in the last couple matches, the main ref, the head ref in that, is actually the martial arts coordinator for the whole movie. Nice. Yeah. And he he ends up refing in every one of the movies that uses a ref. Yeah. yeah. Because he is the main coordinator for all of the movies. I think I think he was in Cobra Kai also. No, a different different coordinator. It was it was it was still a coordinator though. But it was a coordinator that was refing those, yes. Gotcha. Okay, so continuing on. So Crease gets to the point where he's kind of scared that his guys might get beat by this no-name Daniel LaRusso. Because the karate in the valley is Cobra Kai karate. And he is the best karate in the, and he needs to be the best. Right. And he needs to win. So he tells and, Tommy to do... He says sweep the leg. But what he does is not an actual sweep. He Martial likes. arts terminology... Is whatever the what, he like fucking he does like he a like jump out his, he's like a knee. jump kick into the side of his knee yeah okay he took out his knee <laughs> so yes he did take out his knee but basically John Cruz says sweep the knee but I can beat him and he's like it says you know do you have a problem with that there's a no sensei so he ends up jump kicks kick him in the side of the knee and you're, you're, you're combining different different. You know, hurt him in the knee things. Whatever. Because that was Johnny. That, that was Johnny. But regardless, the all the all the Cobra Kai's are going after the knee. They're all trying to take out his knee. So and, and then Miyagi Johnny has wins to fix his, his knee. fight. Johnny wins his fight. Daniel's fighting Tommy, and uh, Tommy takes out John uh, Daniel's knee, and was like, okay. Daniel might not be able. 
Tommy gets disqualified, so there's no he can't yeah, fight yeah. anymore. Gotcha. Yeah, he, he was he was quite obviously just trying to injure right. Daniel, so Daniel so they, has they to go him from the back tournament. to see if he can even fight. Right. So Johnny Johnny's about to win just because his opponent can't fight anymore. Gotcha. Um, and Mr. Miyagi does this cool thing that he did one other time in the movie. Slaps his hands together and rubs them using some kind of Okinawan magic or whatever. Yeah. And the, 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 the demon sorcerer of <coughs> uh, grants great power to, to Daniel LaRusso and allows him to fight on. Uh, <laughs> so he does this weird, like I said, Okinawan magic by slapping his hands together and rubbing it and then like puts on his knee and like basically he just keeps it from hurting too much so he's able to go back his knee up. reforms like a transformer. So not only... So at this point, you got to understand he goes now. Out there, leg cannon, bow. <laughs> <laughs> so now Daniel goes back out there, and fights him on a bum knee. So not only does he end up beating Johnny at the end, using the crane technique. Yeah, the crane kick. Gotcha. I, I am familiar with that at the, at least. Yeah. So the crane technique is something you learn. He learns earlier that he sees Mr. Miyagi doing on this. And he just, he just sort of sees him do it, and then during the tournament, elects to try it because he's only got one leg. So he's like, well, this keeps one leg off the ground. <laughs> so, I mean, Daniel holds his own against Johnny, and I think it ends up being two to two. So Johnny grabs Daniel and does this weird elbow thing on the back of the same hurt knee. Daniel can barely stand up, so he's standing up on one knee, and he's like, Pulls his whole crane. Everybody knows the crane technique. He puts his knee up in the air. And Johnny's getting ready to fight him. And he does the crane technique and kicks Johnny in the face and wins the tournament. Gotcha. Okay. So, that should be the end of the movie. That was the end of the movie. That was the end of that movie. And in the beginning of two, it starts up right after the tournament. So, I'll, I'll wait. Also... At the end, when uh, when Johnny lost, Johnny does present Daniel with the trophy, um, like a good sport, like a good like a good sport, you know. And he's like, "Here, you deserve this. You you earned it, or whatever, something like that." Crap out of me, man. Uh, and the, and there are some weird issues with uh, with that 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 last bit where he where he elbows the knee, right? He could have just swept and like thrown a gut punch and just got the third point and won. Yeah. But instead, he likes to give himself a warning. <laughs> right. So, continuity errors, yes. It's an old 80s movie. They, they had to keep... They're trying, they're trying to build drama and stuff, yeah. Right. They gotta have the hero win. So, Daniel is basically now you have, you have this, this cool thing <laughs> Not where, so apparently, actually. But. You have this really cool thing where Daniel's the winner and he wins and blah, blah, blah. And he becomes, you know, blah, blah. So, we're gonna talk briefly before we get into the second movie about theories beyond that. So you only know Devin, the Karate Kid through How I Met Your Mother. And Yeah, so I've seen the Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan one, or at least at, at least once, and it was like at, on HBO, I watched like 80% of the movie, probably. And it, it very much seems like it's just like a rehashing of the first movie. It is. With differences. Different situations. We'll talk about that movie more. And then, but yeah, I watched... The most exposure I have to Karate Kid is just through my hero... Or, uh, How I Met Your Mother. My hero. <laughs> how I Met so, Your Mother. So in How I Met Your Mother... How I Met Your Academia. And in How I Met Your Mother, the theory about how Daniel was actually the protagonist and... The antagonist. Jo- antagonist. And Johnny is the good guy just trying to live his life and if you really look at it the very first fight all he was trying to do was give back of radio he gives back the radio and and Daniel punches him for no reason you know it's like well okay, okay you can see that well so it, and then it, again it, go back and go to Halloween did he really need to put water on Johnny while he, he's just trying to well, get so hot? Wait, the, fight, the fight on the beach is sort of a weird mutual combat situation. It is. Um, it is. So you could you could easily say either of them were in the wrong because technically they both were, but Johnny 
doesn't actually do that much fighting. No, he just well, he just sort of avoids Daniel as Daniel tries to like shoulder tackle him for like ten seconds. So here's the most that I'll probably actually say of like my own words and input into this discussion. Having watched How I Met Your Mother, and now hearing you guys describe like how the first movie goes, that it seems like other people decided to just kind of take Barney's point of view of that what Johnny is is a real protagonist or whatever but the the kind of character that Barney is isn't like a truth telling character he doesn't you know like his his point of view of it isn't based on oh Johnny didn't do bad things it's just he watched the movie called The Karate Kid and he saw Johnny is the Karate Kid cuz he's he knows karate. He trains at a dojo. He, you know, that's well, using, that's where it comes from. And then right. it kind of I using, guess, using fans the using over the rule time. using the the rule of a of a movie that came out uh, very uh, like very near uh, the Karate Kid Rocky. Uh, your protagonist does lose uh, at the end of the movie uh, in in both cases. Uh, so yes. <laughs> right. Well, so, and, yeah, there's and just that There's a, that. a bunch of other examples he makes, you know, because they start to see that he kind of just sees protagonists as not being protagonists, and the antagonists are usually, like, he's like, so wait, when you watch Terminator, who do you vote for? The Terminator! <laughs> so, you know, there's a couple other examples he makes to that, so it kind of just seems like eventually, uh... Johnny's character, the actor that plays him, gets involved with the show. Like he shows up later because that's that's Barney's hero. Yep. Is, well, I will I will say I will him. say this about specifically protagonist and antagonist as words specifically. They were developed back in the in the day when your hero was the person trying to get a thing done, and the antagonist was someone who was trying to stop them from doing, doing the thing. That thing yeah. And more recently, the the roles have sort of switched, where the antagonist is trying to accomplish a thing, which everyone perceives as a bad thing. Correct. And then your protagonist tries to stop them. Uh, so, but the definitions of protagonist and antagonist, even as they were taught to me when I was in literature class, didn't change. It was still the protagonist tries to do a thing, antagonist tries to stop him. Right. And in in terms of something like the Terminator, the only person who's trying to accomplish anything really is the Terminator. Everyone else is just trying to stop him. Right. So he would technically be the protagonist right. from like a historical well, perspective. Well, I think they more so say good guy, <laughs> bad guy rather than which is which is what which is what people sort of use protagonist and antagonist as a, as a stand-in for is for good guy good and guy, bad guy, guy. guy. because good guy and bad guy sound like baby talk, and protagonist and antagonist sound like you took a college class. Right. <laughs> so, with that awesome, you know, tidbit of protagonist, antagonist, good guy, bad guy thing, we're going to go ahead and move into the second movie. Okay. So, the beginning of the second movie starts at the very end of the tournament. <clears throat> has very little to do with the actual movie, but it was a good segue to some other things. It sets up the third movie. It does set up the third movie, and it does kind of set up Cobra Kai. Yep. Um, so... John Kreese is mad, takes freaking Johnny's second place trophy, breaks it and throws it, and puts Johnny into a chokehold. And Mr. Miyagi and Daniel are And also out. He, he intimidates the rest of the Cobra Kai's from stopping him. Yes. So he is, he's basically terrorizing children now. <laughs> Sounds so, like Mr. Miyagi Mr. Miyagi and, and Reese are the fucking... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So is Daniel and Mr. Miyagi are coming out. These kids out. are just trying to learn karate, and they're getting in the way. <laughs> so they they come out, and Mr. Miyagi stops Kreese from killing Johnny, and they get into this little scuffle where two punches are thrown. Neither by, one of them are by Miyagi. <laughs> neither one of them are by Mr. Miyagi. They're both by John Kreese, and he puts his hand through windows on cars. Yeah, basically and cuts Kreese, up his hands. Really Kreese, good. Kreese throws a punch. Miyagi moves out of the way. Behind Miyagi was the window of a car, so Kreese punches through the window and fucks up one hand, and then Miyagi does it again because John Kreese apparently is, is like. Super <laughs> less intelligent than a dog. Uh, yeah. Like he can't he can't learn like, things. Maybe don't do that again. <laughs> so he does it again. 
Puts and now he's got no hands. And, and Mr. Miyagi throws a wicked nose honk. Um, so he literally, he holds John or Kreese down and like, you know, live or die. Yeah. And, and he's like, no oh, mercy. Like, he repeats his yeah, whole yeah. mantra that that uh, yeah. that he gave to, like, his students when they first went and talked to him. And yeah. it was like, you know, uh, oh. yeah, it was like, uh, mercy is weakness, and all and we are no so mercy. So Miyagi's just humiliating this Yeah, he's, he's yeah. just, he is just tearing him down in the middle <laughs> of this parking lot. And then he just, he just, instead of throwing the, the super murder throat chop that he was gonna throw, he, he just, like, honks his nose and, like, tosses him to the ground. And it's... <laughs> So that becomes key later in the movie. Um, so we're gonna flash forward because the movie flashes forward to. So the All Valley tournament obviously happens about in the middle of the school year. Okay. So they're gonna well, flash. It, forward happens, it happens, I think, toward the end of the school because it happens in like spring. Yeah, I guess that makes uh, sense. So it jump it jumps like the rest of the season away to summer. Yeah. So the beginning of summer happens. So at prom, Allie and um, Daniel will end up breaking up at prom because yeah, she, she, ends, she ends up, up like liking some other dude, some football player from UCLA, and yeah. blah blah blah. And but come to find out that um, Daniel's mom got a transfer to somewhere else, and he was gonna have to move again with his mom. So he's all upset about what happened with him and Allie and what's gonna happen with him and his mom. And, of course, what does Mr. Miyagi do? He puts him to work. And he starts building something. And as he's building it, um, he goes in and is talking to... Or he's messing with Mr. Miyagi's Medal of Honor. Because he won the Medal of Honor in World War II. And he's putting pins on and making a nice little thing. Gives it to Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, he, like, frames it and yeah, stuff. So and, yeah, so he asks Mr. Miyagi, So what are we building out there? He goes, um guest room for who you know a uh, refugee oh yeah from where and then he says the city and I can't remember the city um, that his mom was supposed to be relo- is relocating to he's like what what he goes yes I talked to your mom last night too and said that if you want to stay here and go to college you can stay here with me in my guest room well while they're talking about that the mailman comes in with a registered letter from Okinawa. So now, what we don't know about Mr. Miyagi is that, or what we do know very little about Mr. Miyagi is, yes, he comes from Okinawa, but we never really got a big backstory on why he left Okinawa. Yeah, there in the in the first movie they do a little bit of the backstory about the fact that he left Okinawa, came to the U.S., joined the U.S. military, and he was also in a war. I think he was in Korea. Might be. Um, and that's where he got his his Medal of Honor. Okay, um, so we knew enough about so so yeah the subject he's, matter that's been brought up so far. Right. Yeah, so, but so we, we don't we know we know where why. he got his Medal of Honor, but we don't know about why he came to America. But we also yeah. know that he learned karate from his father, and his father learned it from generations past. That somebody Okinawa is an island, mm-hmm. and they're a fishing island. So one of his ancestors got. Drunk on a ship, woke up somewhere, ended up learning karate, coming karate. back to Okinawa okay. so and teaching karate. If, to if, his I, if I remember correctly, he says he, he ended up somewhere in China. That's a possibility. Uh, and learned a specific form of, of uh, like kung fu, which he adapted with Okinawan uh, arts that that he had, had he learned either later or that's a possibility. And I don't ended think up combining them together into. Miyagi I don't think no they karate. actually said yes. so in the movie. They they, they, they said they said <clears> where he landed they and they it. said what he did with it and they because it wasn't it wasn't originally karate what he learned right but he adapted it and made some of it so they more made karate-ish. so Miyagi karate is different than the karate taught to everybody else in Okinawa. Which, if you talk to anyone who uh, is, you know, actually in Okinawa and runs a karate dojo, they're all different from regular Okinawan karate. <laughs> but anyway, so he learned karate from his father, who learned from his father, and his father, and generations right. yeah, down, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Which, so is, he gets which is actually a historical letter. thing for he gets how his, karate works. Yeah, he gets this registered letter from Okinawa, from somebody that he used to have a fling with, yeah, it was it was Same. his ex girlfriend. 
saying that his father's dying. We never knew that his father was even still alive. We didn't know nothing about this. Right. Dan- Daniel even says something. He's like, I didn't even know your dad was still alive. Right. Or something like Because they, they just figure that Mr. Miyagi is old. Therefore, yeah, yeah. Dad's probably dead. Yeah. So of course, because yeah, his, his dad must be like ancient. Of course, <laughs> now Mr. Miyagi has to explain to Daniel why he left Okinawa to begin with. So here's the thing: back in the day, they used to arrange marriages. Well, uh, this girl he had this thing with uh, Kumiko. Sounds about right. Kumiko, I think, is her name. Okay. And his best friend Sato. Which Word. his dad taught Sato karate. Yeah. Because his dad, Sato's parents were rich and didn't have any time for Sato. Yeah. So his dad brought him in because Mr. Miyagi asked him to teach both karate at the same time. So they were like best friends. Damn. But the families arranged for Kumiko and Sato to get married. Yeah, but Miyagi was in love with Kumiko and Kumiko was in love with Miyagi and instead of allowing this wedding to go through with, he pronounced his love for Kumiko and said that he was going to marry her instead. Which dishonors Sato, and now Sato, his best friend, is mad at him and challenges him to a fight to the death. It's so he gets <coughs> to a fight to the death, and whoever wins gets to marry Kumiko. The obvious reaction to have. Right. You know? Oh, uh, well, you gotta also gotta remember guy. it's olden days, yeah, no. and I mean, they're young teenagers, you know, being stupid. So, as old as they say Miyagi is, it would also fit the timeline of when stuff like that would have actually happened. But instead of fighting Sato, he leaves. Yeah, he runs away. He runs away. Because he doesn't want to fight his best friend, even though he's still in love with Kumiko. Gotcha. So. So now they're going back. Now to Kumiko's Okinawa. the one that wrote and him. He, the and letter. he hadn't been back since then. Yeah. So. Kumiko's the one that wrote him the letter saying that his dad's dying. So he's like, "Well, shoot! Now I got to go back to Okinawa and say my peace with my dad." So Daniel spent all that time building that room for no reason. Well, he was. It comes up in the third movie. Oh, all right. Um, he ends up... He, so, Mr. Miyagi's going to go and tells Daniel to stay. No, go to college, blah, blah, blah. Stay here. I'll be back. It won't take me very long, blah, blah, blah. But, of course, you know, Daniel... Mr. Miyagi's yeah, been there for Daniel. Now. That sounds awesome. Daniel's been... Or, Mr. Miyagi's been there for Daniel through a lot of things. So, what does Daniel do? He uses his college fund to buy a ticket to Okinawa to go with Mr. Miyagi. Because those are equally <coughs> priced college and plane tickets. Well, back then, plane tickets to Okinawa probably cost a lot more, but and college probably wasn't quite as much. But either way, Co- yeah, at, at the, you got to think about it. college has, has multiplied several times uh, in price uh, in in the last thirty years. Well, it'd been, it'd been, it would have been the last. You know, closer to 40 years now. It'd be like 35, yeah. almost 40 years. But So he ends up going... He ends up convincing Mr. Miyagi to let him go and be there for him while he deals with his dad's passing as a friend. You yeah. know, just to be their support. You know, it's just like, you know, you want to support yeah. your friends when stuff like that happens. I understand. So they end up Hello. in Okinawa. So the whole movie is in Okinawa. So this all happens in the first, like... 10 or 15 minutes of the movie. Yeah, like I said, the, the pacing for Karate Kid movies is really fast. Alright, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand. I, I've caught on. To so, I, I, a, lot, a lot of 80, 80s movies are actually like that, where they just, they just, they just move. They just, they, yeah, they're, they're just, just going. They just move fast. <laughs> so, now they're in Okinawa, they get put into a car because they think that Kumiko got him a car because they think thinks that Kumiko is married to Sato, so she's got to have some money, and blah, blah, blah. Comes to find out it was Sato knowing that he was coming back and threatens him, wants to fight, and he's like, he's like, I'm here to see my dad. And he goes, well, you go see your dad, then we'll fight. So this dude just held a grudge that whole time? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. To fight him? Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. So he is allowed to go see his dad, and right after he sees his dad, he literally wants to fight Mr. Miyagi. 
like right so, after S- Sato. Sato, because he respects Miyagi's father, does say, "Go see your father first, and then afterward, I'm gonna freaking murder you. you. I give I'm gonna you. beat you to death with my hands." And when yeah. they're about I'm, when and when Sato's about to take out Mr. Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi's dad dies. So he then gives Mr. Miyagi three days to mourn before he fights him again. Okay. Yep. It's, <laughs> so is. now you have three full days in Okinawa with Mr. Miyagi and Daniel being stupid. And now they just be hanging out. Now they just be hanging out like nothing's going friendos. on. Friendos. Yeah. Just <clears throat> <clears throat> so, but this whole time, now you have a new bad guy, which is Sato's nephew. Oh, um, Ch- uh, chosen, chosen. Yeah. So, and this dude's a beast. You yeah. look at Johnny, you're like, oh, Johnny's pretty strong. Yeah. And you're yeah. Like, jo- no, Johnny, Johnny this was dude. Johnny was American karate. This guy is like full blown, like, <laughs> like homegrown karate. And like, he is a beast. And, like and, he is like Bruce Lee built. Like he's got them like super strong. Like yeah, he's and cut up. His favorite drink is what the. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he's an asshole. All right. Yeah. Like yeah, on top of it. Like, and he's an crazy. ass. So there's a lot of things that happen. Again, like they, they end up they end up finding out that he's like defrauding the town because like they they distribute uh, like they're they're the, the the produce sellers or something. Uh, and uh, he's been using fake weights to weigh things so that he could he could get more money out of the people in the town. Oh, so this guy's an actual bad guy. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Bad guy. Um, uh, and, you know, he attempts to do some murders, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Like, this is, the Karate Kid movies, uh, I'm not sure if they're known for this, but if you watch them back to back, the, the, uh, the sort of acceleration yeah, in, no, like, it's like, oh, yeah. like, like, first, first movie is like, just, you know, some kids having a high school conflict. Second movie is, like, defrauding a whole town with gangsters and, like, like seriously, Sato, like on on his on his poster that he has advertised around around town, proclaims that he is a special forces trainer. He's like he trains the U.S. special forces, which gets into a Cobra Kai theory later. Um, because, yeah, holy crap! Right. <laughs> so what, the theory is that he trained. The theory, John the theory is that he might have cha- trained Crease. Gotcha. Oh, um, like in in the third movie, movie uh, well, we get we can get we'll to that get later, to that in a we're, and we can. So we're gonna we're gonna theory, but. we're gonna briefly go through a bunch of little things from the second movie, which is like um, the second movie is honestly my favorite movie. Mine too. Um, but there is a new love interest. There's a there's a Japanese girl that uh, the Okinawan girl. Whatever, they're the same. Uh, they're the same country now, at least. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I can I can call Hawaiians Americans. It's fine now. So <laughs> so Daniel finds a new love interest and they start to do their thing, but they always run into Chosen, and things happen all yeah, the time. It, it's it's the same kind of basic thing as the first movie. Exactly. Chosen, Chosen likes the same girl, and, and but the thing is, I think they're trying to mirror uh, Miyagi and Sato with, with Daniel, Daniel and Chosen, and, yeah. and so. But, yeah. So, and then one of the best scenes in the whole movie is like they happen to wander into this bar where you see these American guys try to karate chop ice blocks. Yeah, it, no, it's it's a it's a bunch of people trying to do it, but basically you you put your money down and it goes into a pot, and if you, you can better, chop through the chop ice, it. you get money. Well, and, they were taught, you know, and then Daniel's back. And it's like it's like he's doing it all wrong. He's doing it all wrong, and then the guy turns around. And the thing is, is the guy that turns around. Uh-huh. Okay, you gotta understand the actor that plays this guy was um, his call sign was Sunset in Top Gun, but he was the guy that takes over for Goose at the Top Gun training center for Maverick as a backseat for him. I was hoping you were gonna say he was Chappie, but no, but <laughs> it's like it's like for me for me the Karate Kid and Top Gun were my. Two are my favorite movies growing up. Well, with 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 Cobra Kai being what it is, it would have been way more flavorful if it had been Chappie. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um. So he turns on and says, "So you think you can do better, Big Mouth?" And he goes, "He goes, I don't know, I don't know. Just drop some ice." He goes, "He's got to get through all, you know, all three, right?" And uh, then no, no all, all six. six. 
So he's got six ice blocks up there that Daniel has to go through. And he goes, I haven't got that kind of money. Blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, Mr. Miyagi comes in and says, you know, I got you covered. Do it, kid. So Sato is in there with this large amount of money. Okay. And Chosen's in there. And then Mr. Miyagi comes in and saves him and says, he says you're going to get us. Oh, I can't believe you're going to get us out of here. And he says, he goes, no, you're gonna cut, you're gonna break that ice. He goes, I got you covered. Don't worry, we got this bet. Let's do this. He goes, what's what's bet or what's odds? And he places down a shit ton of money, and like he's like, I gotta do what? Yeah, you gotta go through all six. He goes, how many how many pieces of ice and. Yeah, Miyagi teaches him like a new focus a technique. New focus and, technique. Yeah, you know, then he he he, he, he chops through the and ice. He chops and, through the ice, and, and Miyagi's all like college fun. And <laughs> so so he goes he goes. Oh my God, what are we gonna do with all this money? And you see, Mister Miyagi kind of. I'm gonna use you get college education. We go get Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, and there's a lot of things like that that happen throughout this whole movie. Like um, they were at a dance and. Daniel ends up punching Chosen in the nuts, literally. Um, they get into a couple other battles, but it yeah. comes to it comes to a certain point where well, he, like, he, lear- he learns his new technique because crane technique is is no longer the cool hip new thing, right? Uh, he, so, le- he learns he learns the drum the technique. drum technique, which is a, a, a technique that he has to learn, which becomes again key to the end of the movie. Um, and it's more it's more Miyagi esque actually because it, it's basically just a, a a technique that allows you to to basically block you any, know, anything what's, that what's the best in. way what's the best way to defend something is to not be there yeah okay so you think about it what's the best way to defend a punch is to not be where the punch is gonna hit you right be out of the way gotcha yeah. so <clears throat> so uh, he learns. The drum technique, blah, blah, blah. This all happens throughout the movie, but now we're getting towards the end. Well, the three days to more is gone. And Sato starts tearing uh, up it, the town because... Um, yeah. Starts tearing up the town because technically Sato owns all that land that this town is on. Yeah. This little village is on. And, and like, Miyagi, if you don't come out here, I'm going to destroy all the things. Yeah, and so finally... Everything comes to a head where um, Sato and Miyagi are going to fight. All right. Okay? And there's fight at midnight. It's kind of stupid. They're old guys. Why the fuck would they be awake at midnight? And we all know old people go to bed at like, you know, 8 o'clock. They're not going to be awake at midnight. But anyway. Um, but what's going on is Sato's getting ready for the fight. He's in his own little dojo, his own little shrine area where he's doing his praying and kind of getting himself centered and meditating and this, that, and the other. But Mr. Miyagi and Daniel are packing to leave. He's going to run away like a little bitch again? Yep, he's going to run away again. So, Um, but Daniel's got to tell old girl that he loves her first before they well hold on so it, you know keep this, that that's where that's where that's working. where so a tea ceremony is what you find you see later now we can also come to find out that Kumiko never married Sato right okay why out of respect for Mr. Miyagi so he never married Sato gotcha so they never got married so there when they f- meet again they fall in love all over again so they do this thing called a tea ceremony, an Okinawan tea ceremony, saying that I, you know, they fall in love, blah blah blah, and Daniel sees it, and it's all cool, blah blah blah. Then later on, so old girl that he falls for presents Daniel with the tea ceremony. While doing this tea ceremony, out of nowhere, this giant gust of wind just blows out a candle and they're like, I don't know, they're like, oh my god there's going to be a hurricane or a typhoon come through here so this giant storm rolls through the village and rolls through Okinawa yeah okay, so they're running to get into this bunker, but on their way to the bunker, they keep running into people trying to get to this old pillbox which is an old military style bunker where it's underground Gotcha. And you have little slats where you can see out, so it's just yeah, head yeah. part. But you're mainly underground, so you're safe in there. So the whole village starts to make its way to this pillbox so they can be safe while they wait the storm out. 
on their way, they see people, so they start helping people in. Um, then they watch this building go down and come to realize that Daniel had seen Sato in that building, and this building collapses on top of him. And he so goes, oh my see, god, Sato's in there. Yeah, they, they see Chosen come come running toward him, and they ask him, uh, where, where's you know where's your uncle? Because Chosen was his, his nephew or something. Yeah. And I was like, where, where's, where's your uncle? And he's like, he's dead, he's dead, I saw him die. And so... Mr. Miyagi and Daniel go out there and they start moving some rubble around and and you see Sato buried under one of the main beams of the building yeah, okay. that he can't lift off by himself. So basically he's And he's there. obviously not dead. Yeah. And he's not dead. And he goes he goes, um and yeah. Sato's yelling at him, Oh, you come to kill me now, you wait till I'm weak and you blah blah blah. Mr. Miyagi's just looking at him like they're trying to lift this beam off to help him, and then they can't move it. So Mr. Miyagi does his karate crap, and he chops this beam in half. Literally. Yeah. So he breaks yeah, his he's... beam, and they get Sato, and they, they help Sato go to... Um, well, they go, they go and hide in the pillbox. But... They go to hide in the pillbox, but they see a girl... The, yeah, the girl who was, who was, ringing, who was, ringing, who was ringing, ringing the, the warning bell, bell. The warning bell is stuck on the ladder. And um, he... Get Sato and everybody and a couple other people they run into on the way back and they start rushing them back. Daniel goes up the ladder to save the little girl while the ladder breaks and starts to lean towards this electrical thing. He pulls his belt off and knocks the electrical wire down, puts her on his back and starts to bring her down. So he's on giving her a piggyback ride on the way back over and starts to run. He just can't quite make it through the storm. He's following. So Sato tells, goes to Chosen, go help him. He goes, I can't help him, you know, I can't do it, I can't, you know, because they're enemies now, because they through this whole movie they've been yeah, yeah. fighting over and they, they can't. So Sato says, screw it, he runs out there and helps them. So he helps them, everybody becomes friends, but when they get back to the pillbox, because of what Chozen's done, he looks at him and says, um, now... To you, I am dead, which means that he basically disowns Chosen. Right. So Chosen runs off into the storm, and you lose, you know, lose side Chosen. So now everybody's friends, you know, things happen. A lot of honorable things happen in that one scene, and it's one of those things that like people like me who love that kind of honorable stuff. It just kind of makes you like feel good. That feel good side of you, right? Yeah. And it does a lot of that, and it's a very good. It, at it, doing it, seems, that. it seems like a, like a really <coughs> good place to end the movie. You know, Miyagi and Sato have made up, and you know everything's going good, and they're going to go to a festival, and yay, festivals! So yeah, so they do this thing called a bone dance every year, and now the village is all messed up, and it's supposed to be held in this castle that Sato owns that they haven't been able to use in a long time. So Daniel convinces Sato to let them do the bone dance, which is an honoring of the dead. Gotcha. In this castle again. And so now they're doing this giant festival inside this this uh, this castle again. And everybody's there. Everybody's happy. Sato and Miyagi are best friends again. Blah, blah, blah. And then so the girl that um, Daniel has fallen, in, fallen for, she wants to be a dancer. She wants to be like a ballet. Yeah, that was, that was her whole big thing. Her professional she dancer, to. but she does these, um, the the style of dance that they do, and she does that very well. So she does her own solo. So they get her out there, and she's doing her her solo dance. <clears throat> In the middle of said solo dance, some dude on looks like a zip line. Yeah, just who who would happen to be on a zip line at a time like this? Chosen <laughs> comes down. <laughs> And challenges Daniel in front of the whole village to a fight to the death for his honor. And basically holds his little girlfriend captive with a freaking knife. <clears throat> yep. So then that's your final fight. Your final fight is Daniel versus Chosen. And when I say it should never have ended the way it did, it should never have ended the way it did because Chosen would have destroyed Daniel. Without but any Daniel doubt in my life. uses the new technique that he learned. Drum, drum technique. technique. The <laughs> drum technique, yeah. So, ends up beating 
chosen, and then movie's over, blah, 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 stuff happens, you know. Everybody's happy again, celebrations, movie ends. Okay. okay so he wins the fight, movie ends. Right. Then movie three happens. The movie three... And that's when things this really where, go off the rails. <laughs> see, see, here's the thing about movie three. So for movie three, I might need some help because I haven't seen it in a while. And I'm very cloudy on a lot of the details of what happens. Like, the first two, I got those two details really well because yeah. I've memorized those movies. Oh. Um, because I watched them over and over again. So, the, the third movie is is just disproportionate, sort of like, it, it's... Okay, things, things escalate through the, the, the Karate Kid movies, but things, like, really go from, like, you know, like... Five to ten, like just from the jump from Karate Kid two to three, because yeah. you know three starts pretty standard. They're on their way back from Okinawa. They land. Uh, you know the girl from Okinawa couldn't couldn't come, come because she just she just couldn't leave her home. She just didn't want to and stuff. So so she stays there, and so it's time for a new love interest. Uh, but right. <laughs> um, so, well, the funny thing about that new love interest, it doesn't become a love interest because she ends up getting back together with her ex-boyfriend. Right, and they just be friends. Um, this, <laughs> anyway, um, the third movie is Miyagi and and Daniel try and open a bonsai shop, you know, little bonsai trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's all things going on. That's whatever it is. You know, it's business and stuff and making bonsai trees and and all that. But John Kreese, you know, the head of Cobra Kai from the first movie, is down on his luck. And ever since the All-Valley Tournament, all of his students left him. He can't get any more students. His, his dojo's going under. And so he goes to his buddy, who happens to be like an ultra-billionaire. Uh, kind of <laughs> reminds me, if you look at the guy, kind of reminds me of a younger Steven Seagal. Yeah, he's got like the ponytail, and he's like this guy is like a like a karate mastermind, but he's like a business guy who's like a really shady business guy. Like, I can't even remember like the name of his of his corporation, but they they dump toxic waste, like like and I don't mean like they dispose of. I mean like they just dump it like and like it, it's sort of in their name. It's like it's it's like Toxa Toxicorp or something. <laughs> it's like they 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 are they are like. They're like very obviously they, evil. They did like, not work very hard to make you. No, they they not try and make it subtle at all. This is a millionaire who is an eccentric, you know, evil mastermind who dumps toxic wa waste in third world countries uh, just to have a good time, um, and like, so he bought all of the Cobra Kai dojos, and he's he gave them to to Kreese, and because they they apparently were in the military together. And they learned Cobra Kai Karate together. Um, so he and comes up. In, he, com he comes up with this giant master plan on how Kreese can get his revenge. And step one is to send Kreese to Tahiti. So he sends John Kreese off on a vacation to Tahiti for two weeks, and he's all like, "Don't worry, when you get back, everything will be in motion." Um, and his his plan starts off with, uh, you know, he. He like semi abandons his a business. He's like, you know, I don't for for the next for the next three months or something. I am all about revenge. I want I don't want to take calls. I don't want to have meetings and nothing. I'm I am just about revenge. <laughs> and he and he hires this this kid. <clears throat> um, well, for, first he he goes to Mr. Miyagi and and tries to apologize for for Kreese's actions. Like he was like, I was just sent from uh, from Korea. From our master, like Sung Young Kim or something. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, but he like and people people in the in the theory community are thinking that he just made that name up. Like he just he just like made up a whole thing for, for that, that that makes for, sense for a fake apology. Why yeah, not? right. He's he's already thing. lying about everything else. So why right. <laughs> why not lie about who his master is? Uh, so he's he's like I was in Korea. I heard about we heard about what happened with with Chris. You know, our our master sent me over. Uh, Wasn't Kreese supposed to be like dead? Yes, and, and and he was like Kreese wanted to make amends, but he he just died the other day, 
uh, and they were like, oh, we we're so sorry, and, you know, so he's, he convinces them that, that Kreese was trying to make amends and then died, uh, and so he's taking over the Cobra Kai dojos, and he wants to make Cobra Kai more like how it was back in the day when they first learned Cobra Kai karate, and he would, he would, you know, and so he yeah. makes up this whole big thing about how Cobra Kai is better now, and then he hires... That other karate Johnny. guy. It, it's it's Mike Barnes. Mike Barnes, the right. bad boy of karate. Yeah, karate's bad boy. He hires this guy specifically to force Daniel to sign back up for the All Valley tournament. And with like he like breaks into like their bonsai shop and threatens him and he he, he leaves him at the bottom of a cliff with no way out while like the tide's coming in at one point. Like yeah, like it is like it is like full blown like we will murder you if you don't enter this karate tournament. <laughs> yeah, but Mr. So, Miyagi refuses you don't to let train us Daniel. Beat the shit out of you, we'll right? Kill you. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Miyagi refuses to train Daniel for this tournament. So, so even so, even though he was being threatened with death at the time that he signed up for the tournament and was totally under duress, Mr. Miyagi won't won't train him because he doesn't agree with fighting in tournaments unless you have to. Um, right? So, <laughs> you don't have to this time. There's no... There's right. Just, there's there's, there's your nothing, life. Right. There's the, nothing the, to the, the, fir the first time it was important. You were being bullied at school. Well, the, the second is, time... <laughs> the your first life time, was being threatening. No big The deal. first time was to, again, to save him from being bullied, but there's no... To Mr. Miyagi, there's no reason for him to fight this time. There is no... There's nothing to gain out of it. Right. So, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but, I mean, it's sort of beyond, beside the point. Yes. Yeah, because it, ser it serves the plot. And the plot is to leave Daniel in such a place where he has no other choice but to go to Terry Silver, who's the millionaire guy, to go to Terry Silver at Cobra Kai and join Cobra Kai to train for this tournament. And Terry Silver basically puts him through hell and, and makes him... Like, like he, he puts him through hell in such a way that Daniel's thanking him the whole way through. So he's got, like, bloody knuckles and, like, uh, like, like bleeding feet and, like... Yeah, because like that was his, one of the things that John like Kreese his, said. Yeah. John Kreese says, is, what would you like me to do this and make his knuckles bleed? Because at the end of the... Yeah. At the beginning and, of the second and, movie, his knuckles were bleeding yeah. as he punched windows and make his And ter bleed. Terry Silver, being a cartoon character, just sort of jumps up in the air and goes, I like that! <laughs> Because he is not a real human, I, I refuse to believe it. He is. He, so he, yeah, so he he's puts a Joker through, on steroids. He puts him through this training where he's like, you know, teaches him. He goes, if you can't stand, you can't fight. If you can't breathe, you can't fight. If you can't see, you can't fight. So basically, if you can't breaking stand, legs, yeah. breaking legs, hitting, breaking ribs, breaking noses. That's basically what he's teaching Daniel. Is like. You know, no mercy. Sweep the leg. You know, yard. did you ever taught a sweep technique and te teaching him how to? Do but a sweep? he's he's making him do these 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 techniques on a, a wooden dummy. Um, and so he's like making him throw like full power sweeps at like Whoa. two by fours. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then you know, so he's he's basically do, having him do all this stuff, and and eventually, uh, you know, he's. He's, he tries to back out of the tournament, like him and Mr. Miyagi talk about it, and he's like, you're right, I, I won't I won't do it, and it, do, it doesn't matter if they try and murder me at the bottom of the cliff or whatever. Um, so he's going he's gonna to drop out, and he goes to Cobra Kai to uh, apologize to uh, Sensei Silver, and just out of nowhere, Kreese shows up, and Mike Barnes show up, and they're just going to, like, three men beat the hell out of him in the middle of Cobra Kai. And then... Mr. Miyagi shows up and there's a big throwdown, and like, <laughs> and then they they elect that they will go and finish this at the tournament, um, and I, I think at, at that point Mr. Miyagi actually was, says that was one of my favorite he, scenes. He, he, too. he says something to the to the effect of "You were right. I should I should have you know uh, understood that this was this was more serious than, than that." That was one of my favorite scenes though too. Is right after Miyagi beats up Silver because Silver was like whoa. Whoa! And then at the very end, after he beat the crap out of Silver, Mr. Man like, Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> 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 nice. 
But uh, so they, they end up going to the tournament, and the, the tournament rules uh, for this go around, which is the reason why Daniel originally wanted to be in the tournament, was it was an easy win because since he was the returning champion, the only person he had to fight was the finalist. Winner, okay. Um, so he just has to fight the one fight, and Mike Barnes obviously just trashes through everyone because so far in the series, Mike Barnes is the most capable karate person that they've run into yet. Um, like, like, seriously, like, he beat Chosen with the drum technique. He tries drum technique, he tries the crane kick technique, and Mike Barnes is just like, get out of here with your shit. And like, he's just like, nice. and like, he, he ends up winning because, like, the point system is really weird. Uh, in plot armor. Right, it's basically plot armor. Like, he, he, <laughs> got, he got, like, one point their whole fight and, win, and wins. Nice. Like, um, but they like they fast forward through that in just the hopes that you don't really understand it because yeah, if you, if you, if you rewatch that 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 last tournament, that last tournament is like the last ten minutes of the movie, like not even. Yeah, the yeah, thing is, is like like, Barnes, like so Barnes Barnes was told to punish him. So basically, what Barnes is doing, Barnes would get points and then right. do illegal moves to get points taken away from him. Uh, so he, he was, was just it was, punishing it was, it was two. It was two a set number of points, or until time runs out. And they told him just run time out and just win by one point. And so he would do a, do a thing, do an illegal move, get get a warning and get a point taken away, and just do that over and over again, and to the point where he he eventually you know got like one point against Mike Barnes and then won. Uh, just <laughs> because he he had. Because of plot his armor. shit out, right? Because because, because plot armor. Yeah, he, I he mean, scored a point and then did something illegal, and then Daniel scored a point with like one second left, and Daniel won. Okay, yeah. so we ran through the third movie pretty quickly. Um, uh, that's the, just because the third movie in continuity does not mesh very well. The third the third movie in continuity meshes perfectly fine. It's just it's filled with crazy people, right? Doing unrealistic things, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we <clears throat> we missed out like this original bonsai tree that Miyagi brought over from Okinawa. Uh, Which, that was that was the like, reason why they were at the bottom of the cliff. Right. Um, seems like anything's possible if, uh... This girl love interest that ends up not being... chop a fucking beam in half. Yeah. So, the, 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 girl, the girl love interest, who was not a love interest, she was a mountain climbing person, and, was, yeah, and so she... Well, she was a pottery maker that had mountain climbing bil- abilities, which came in really nice because she made pottery right across the street from the bonsai shop. So she was she was making so she their was pots, making pots for the then, bonsai shop. You know, the Mike Barnes and all of them came in and destroyed the shop, and they needed money. So a lot of these plot points that you guys tell me about so far seem so unnecessary. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, we glossed over the third movie. It's not my favorite. I don't think. I, I mean, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. I've watched it a couple times because I like watching things in entirety. So if I start to watch the Karate Kid, there there is some stuff in it. I'm gonna watch them all yeah. that that I'm excited for in Cobra Kai. Like I'm excited to see like if they bring back Mike Barnes and what happens if he like runs into Chosen because we know Chosen's gonna be in the new season, right? So, like, if Mike Barnes be Chosen, like, what happens? Um, oh, God, Chosen would destroy him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's anyway. the thing, is, is in a, in a straight-up actual fight, Daniel beat Chosen. But Daniel could barely beat Mike Barnes in a tournament format where Mike Barnes was basically semi-trying to lose. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a, like... Yeah, yeah. like yeah. I said, the continuity inside of it. Like, so seriously, if you looked at the uh, abilities... But, like, what, what's going what's gonna to happen if Terry Silver shows up? You know, because he's a millionaire who is a crazy person. Right. Uh, and, and... So, we're going to move into the next movie. Um, we're getting kind of long here on this one, so... Um, the next movie is called The Next Karate Kid. So, it doesn't have Daniel in it. Okay. It has Mr. Miyagi in it, but he ends up helping out... Um, it's a military buddy of his. He ends up. I don't know. Remember, I don't remember the whole story and why. But his 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 military friend has passed away. Um, and it's like his 
daughter or granddaughter or something uh, is like going through her angsty teenage years. And she uh, knows some martial arts already, so Miyagi isn't really teaching her. He's just showing her how to focus her energy into different means. Yeah, into not being such a such a shithead. Because yeah, um, sure. she. So the movie itself is an all right movie. I don't want to get too deep into it. Uh, it does. It does suffer a lot from like Karate Kid Three syndrome, where uh, things just go crazy for no reason. Right. Like there. Yeah. Like people. Like at a school dance, the the bad guys like break through the ceiling and start rappelling down. Like it is. Like it's pretty. It's pretty wackadoodle. Now it's not a bad movie. It's not a great movie. It's not one of those movies where I'm going to sit and recommend. Yeah, it's it's a per, it's a perfectly passable movie. Um, but what, what we are going, what I do want to spend a little, passable. I do want to spend a little more time on the Karate Kid with uh, Jackie Chan, because truthfully, it's more in tune to what the Karate Kid's main basis is, but in a different story format. So instead of somebody moving from the East Coast of the United States to the West Coast, it's actually somebody moving from the United States to China. Yeah. And now, the East Coast to West Coast is a culture shock. Now, could you imagine the culture shock of a little young black kid moving from the United States to China? Yeah. So he's a little young black kid trying to get along with Chinese culture. Yeah. Again, there's a little love now, interest in there. Well, l- luckily, in, but, in the in the newer Karate Kid, um, his neighbor happens to be a white dude, also from America, and he's in the movie more than random neighbor number one was in the original Karate Kid. Yes, like he actually like goes to, like the final tournament. But and stuff again, and is, is, like, so he's like an actual friend. There is so no yeah, Mr. Yeah. Miyagi; it's a Mr. Han. So right. Jackie Chan plays a guy named Mr. Han, who is also a maintenance guy in the apartment complex that. And he moves yeah. into, and he's not a DJ in Lincoln Park. No. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. <laughs> but a lot of the premise, like if you watch the original Karate Kid with Daniel, and then this Karate Kid with um, Jaden Smith, and the progression and the way it works, it does kind of, but it has its own story. I will say, yeah. st- it's not its own. Having seen the original. But just hearing like the descriptions of it, it seems like it doesn't suffer so much from like pointless plot. Correct. Well, it it, it, and is, it is a little weird because instead of, instead of learning the crane technique and using the crane technique oh, at the he, end, he does like a backflip. He does. He, the, he, the, he uses the the snake technique. Uh, now that that was a little disappointing to me because the crane technique actually does come from kung fu. Yes, which is what he's learning in. So yes, the difference. The only difference is they're not learning karate. They're learning. He's actually learning kung fu, because yeah. that's what Jackie Chan knows is kung fu. So he teaches him basic kung fu moves. But for me, it's not just the 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 fight scenes are better. The the martial arts is better because you got Jackie Chan in it. Um, Jaden Smith was actually Jayden a martial artist. Jaden Smith's a decent martial artist in his own right. Now, what what he's doing now, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, he's well, being Jaden Smith and not being a boy. We don't um, need to talk about that. Well, I'm not even sure if that's a thing anymore. He is apparently gender neutral now. Oh yeah, he was transgender, and now I don't know what he is. I don't know what he is anymore either. Yeah, Him, her. Is. And that's, that's the thing is Whatever. I have no idea. So, yeah, so Jaden, if you hear this, I apologize. I don't know what. I, I don't. I don't follow use. enough celebrity gossip to keep up hundred percent. Same with that. here. So I'm going to apologize now for using the wrong pronoun. But anyway, excuse him, sir. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but the movie itself, to me, <laughs> is actually really well put together. The martial arts, the choreographing, the the all that stuff was done very very well. Um, Jackie Chan's character and Jackie Chan as an actor shows a lot of chops in that movie. Yeah. Like, he shows a lot of emotion, a lot of being able to be completely distraught. You know, it shows a lot. It, it just shows the progression of, like, the types of movies from the 80s into a newer style of movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... 
I do recommend Jackie Chan's Chan's original (coughs) genre from before he came over to the U.S. was dramas. He was in a lot of dramas. He got into comedy later, and that's what he got known for over here. Was they started importing some of his some of his comedies from China. Yeah, and then he got famous for that. Then he came over here and kept doing comedies. Yeah, because some of my favorite movies are like Rush Hour. Yeah. Um, what is it? Shanghai, Shanghai Noon. Noon and Shanghai Nights. Yeah, well, those so are the, great. The thing is, some some of my favorite ones from him are still the ones that were from when he was still over in China doing Old, comedies. Yeah. Like uh, um, uh, was it uh, Twin Dragons, Rumble in the Bronx, Rumble, which, is, which is one he he actually did from over there. Um, um uh, Drunken Master. Drunken Master. Uh, there's a uh, you know Super Cop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's there, he did, he did a bunch of really good movies that a lot of people know him for. But oh yeah, were imported. But the ones that he did in the United States were also very, very good. Like, yeah. have you seen his new one? Um, oh, God, what is the name of that movie? The one where he's an older guy and his the daughter. Foreigner? The foreigner. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! So that because was, he that doesn't was a more, do that was a more serious action movie. Yeah. But he doesn't do a lot of martial arts stuff in that movie. No, not really. But the way that movie is done for a Jackie Chan movie was, oh my god, a great movie. Yeah, it, was it was absolutely. It was. Great it was. Movie. It was basically a taken UK edition. Like yeah. It was, it's so <laughs> we did okay. We discussed a lot of Karate Kid stuff. Um, I want to go ahead and end this podcast here um, with a couple recommendations, maybe. Um, Devin, I don't know if you're going to have a whole lot. Watch How I Met Your Mother. That's a good show. If you guys haven't seen How I Met Your Mother, I think it's on Hulu now, right? Yes, it's on Hulu. So it's on Hulu now, so go ahead and watch it. Funny, funny, funny show. Um, do you have any recommendations of... Well, you, you know, there is a Karate Kid cartoon show. It's god-awful. So, I mean, watch it. It's, it's So, my real... My real... Things are just awesome. My real that's recommendation... That's my whole thing. My <laughs> real recommendation is, if you have not seen the new Karate Kid, watch it. And if you not have not seen The Foreigner from Jackie Chan, yeah. watch it. So, with that, I am actually going to say... Um, talk at you later.